Hi, I'm Eric Whiting. And today I'm going to bring you the top 40 heavy metal albums. Keep in mind this is my opinion, so if you don't agree with something, feel free to respectfully disagree with me in the comments below. Otherwise, I won't listen to you. So, let's get started. With number 40. Death. Individual Thought Patterns. Now, Death is a really good death metal band. For one thing, they're very sophisticated. Chuck Schuldiner is definitely one of the greatest guitarists of the genre. Now, this album has a really good lineup, because uh, Andy LaRoque, however you say his name, from King Diamond, is the other guitarist on this album. Now, on individual thought patterns, it's kind of at a good halfway point for Death, because two, there's two sides to their career. The early side of their career with Scream Bloody Gore is obviously very raw. All of Death's vocals are raw, but something about Scream Bloody Gore it had their vocals were even more raw than before. Well, those type of vocals are present on individual thought patterns. All of the instrumentals are very complex. It almost has a jazz influence to it. But just about every song on it's very good, so I highly recommend this album. Sabotage, Hall of the Mountain King. Now, I'm not that familiar with a lot of Sabotage's music, but this is a really good album. A lot of a couple of the members from this band went on to do Trans-Siberian Orchestra. So in this album, one of the big highlights is they play Edward Grieg's Hall of the Mountain King. The title of that track is Prelude to Madness, which is definitely one of the best tracks on this album and is one of their most famous. There's a lot of other really good songs, such as 24 Hours Ago, Strange Wings. One thing that really works well for this album is the sound. It has pretty good production, but it also has a very really epic and kind of echoey sound, almost like it was recorded in some sort of medieval castle. Pantera, Vulgar Display of Power. Now this is the first Pantera album that I ever listened to back in high school, because at the time I was getting into Metallica and Slayer and that sort of thing, so Pantera just fit right in. Well, Cowboys from Hell was more of a, a, a traditional thrash metal album, Vulgar Display of Power, still takes the thrash metal influence, but also mixes it with more of a slower, bluesy influence, kind of like Black Sabbath, while still using a lot of Dimebag Daryl's guitar showmanship, which was largely influenced by Eddie Van Halen. Some track highlights from Vulgar Display of Power are Mouth for War, Walk, which most of you know, Fucking Hostile, was it No Good Attack the Radical, even the last song, Hollow, is a really good song. It's kind of along the lines of Cemetery Gates in terms of being a half-ballad, half-heavy type song. What's unique about Pantera as well is their image, because their image is, it takes the, the menace of thrash metal with the, the jeans and the jackets and stuff like that. Because they're southern, of course, it's fitting, because it, they mix it with a, uh, like an outlaw country type of look. Phil's vocals are more barked on this album. On Cowboys From Hell, he used a lot more range. His vocals are more barked like a drill sergeant on this album, but it's very fitting for their sound. So either way, Vulgar Display of Power was a favorite of mine in high school, and it remains a favorite today. Wasp, self-titled album. Now, Wasp was one of the more edgy hair metal bands. There's some debate over whether they fall into that genre. Just for argument's sake, I'm gonna include them because they definitely had that sound, the kind of party hard sound with the anthems. And they did definitely fit in with the image and the sound, although their image was a lot more kind of ghoulish, almost like Twisted Sister. So they're going for more of like a shock rock type of look. So on their self-titled album, it really starts out with a bang with their most famous song, Fuck Like a Beast, which was also one of their most controversial. The song afterwards, I Wanna Be Somebody, is also a really good anthem. Some of my other favorites include The Torture Never Stops, which provides a stunning closer to the album and also has some pretty twisted lyrics. It is Judas Priest Screaming for Vengeance. Now, in the 1980s, Judas Priest had a more polished sound than, and a more mainstream sound as well than their 70s albums, which were more along the lines of Black Sabbath. A couple of my favorite songs from this album are The Hellion and Electric Eye. That's a really good kind of speed metal type of song. Has some great solos and really good guitar work. Uh, their most popular song from this album is You've Got Another Thing Coming, which I'm honestly a little tired of by now, but it's still a pretty good song. 
And a couple of underrated songs from this album are the last two, which are Fever and Devil's Child. Either way, this is one of their better 80s albums and definitely worth a listen. Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast. Now this album is often considered Iron Maiden's greatest album, and I have to disagree with that. It's a really good album, and it does give their three greatest songs, that being Run to the Hills, Number of the Beast, and Hallowed Be Thy Name. All of those are excellent songs, and I'd easily rank those in my top three Iron Maiden songs. I don't know, compared to the what I consider to be their greatest album, this one doesn't quite live up to that, and you'll find out later what I consider their greatest album. A couple other really good songs on the album are Children of the Damned and The Prisoner. Both of those are excellent songs. 22 Acacia Avenue and Gangland, they're still good, they're much better than a lot of what comes out today, but by Iron Maiden standards, and considering this is the same album which features Hallowed Be They Name, those songs kind of fall flat to me in comparison. Except Restless and Wild. Now, Except had a lot of releases in the 80s. Um, the two everyone's familiar with are Restless and Wild and Balls to the Wall. But uh, Restless and Wild had a very raw sound to it, a lot less polished than Balls to the Wall. The first song, Fast as a Shark, is also pretty much my favorite song by them ever written. It's really fast, actually it's pretty funny as it starts out with some German folk song in the beginning and then cuts to Udo screaming and the guitars come in at full speed, so I really like that part of the song. The rest of the album definitely matches up just as well, you know, it has those you know, echoing power chords, and the guitarist has some really good solos on this one. Udo's voice kind of resembles Bon Scott's, and the instruments have a really strong Judas Priest influence. It's a really good album, and if you're looking to listen to some German 80s metal that isn't power metal, or, well, I guess it's arguably thrash metal, but it's more on the traditional side. The way, I would check out Accept Restless and Wild. Judas Priest, Painkiller. And this was in 1990, and this was a new turn for Judas Priest, because this is a full-out speed metal album, which sounds a lot like the bands of the time who they had influenced. Rob Halford's voice is in top shape as usual, and the guitar work is absolutely flawless. The one downside to this album is the lyrics are extremely cheesy and cliched, even for Judas Priest standards and even for heavy metal standards, but part of me thinks that was done on purpose because Judas Priest seem to be pretty well aware that they've started a lot of the metal cliches. So, uh, in some ways, this is kind of like a music version of the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Commando, where it plays up every cliche in the book, but does so in a humorous way and doesn't take itself too seriously. So if you can ignore that, or if, if you like that kind of thing, then you're going to love this album. But either way, this is a great album. There's a lot of good speed and thrash metal songs in there, and the production values are great. And this is also right after they released Turbo and Ram It Down, both of which were pretty mediocre albums. Except Balls to the Wall. Now I mentioned Except a couple places ago on the list. And this album was their biggest commercial success. If you've ever heard of Except or were around in the 80s, then that's probably the one song that you're most likely to know by them. They played it recently in that movie The Wrestler. And, you know, as cheesy and goofy as that song is, I fucking love it. You know, the power chords at the beginning, and you know, it's a real catchy anthem. There's some other really good songs on there, too, like Love Child has a really good solo. Fight It Back has this really, it's almost like an, it's kind of like an eagle. Uh, Udo has this really good shriek in the middle of the song. It's very animalistic and matches up to, like, a hawk or an eagle. I'm on a mark. Twilight of the Thunder God. Now, I'm on a Marth is one of my favorite recent metal bands. I saw them in concert back in 2007 when I lived in Philadelphia. And Twilight of the Thunder God is a really good album. It's a good mix of, like, melodic and heavy. They're a death metal band, but they have some really good melodies, pretty much along the lines of a power metal band, but mixed with the guttural vocals and, you know, the themes of battle and bravery. In some ways, the themes that they sing about are similar to Manowar, but a hell of a lot less goofy. Yeah, I mean, Amon Amarth knows how to take themselves kind of seriously without coming off really goofy like Manowar does. 
This is one of my favorite albums of the last 10 years, and I highly recommend this one.